And I'm sure you know how this goes. I've been making some progress off screen of things you've already seen in the tutorial Just to try and uh, speed things along and of course our peaceful and not violent at all fortress was interrupted by the Minotaur Locum Ozerust and then I'm good luck pronouncing that last one a giant humanoid monster with the head of a bull So we're gonna do this a nice and easy way. We have got some migrants. We've replaced all of our uh, Deceased legionaries we're going to order squads A and B, kill from list. We do currently have um, some visiting merchants from the homeland. So this Minotaur being the newest thing on the map should be all the way at the bottom. There he is, Locum what's his nuts So we are going to unpause the game. We're going to find him on this others list. The Forgotten Beast, by the way, is down here. But he's just kind of chilling on floor 32 away from the rest of us. So we're just going to leave him to us. We are going to follow this Minotaur. Now that squads A and B are on their way out, they should intercept him before he finds any civilians, and he doesn't have any risk of infecting them if he does. So I think we're okay not uh, triggering alert for this guy. Petitions available. Eradicating monsters. Sure. Oh, there's a crossbow bolt. And who is it who's fighting him? One of the legionaries with a silver warhammer, and it looks like uh, just wow that. So this minotaur was just absolutely destroyed by item Alabak just within a single page of combat, which is absolutely incredible. Our dwarves are pretty much the best thing since sliced bread at this point. Once they all have their um, their water skins and their backpacks and they can carry food out with them, we're going to be launching a raid with uh, the A-Team. Who, if you'll see here, actually have, for the most part, they all have a full set of armor now. And I think they actually might all have... Well, the way to check is we need to find Kith. Or is it Rith? I think it's Rith. So we'll go to military and... Yep, Rith Nitigrush, the uh, the tenth member of this squad. So he gets like the worst equipment of the best people, but essentially, if he is fully equipped, everyone else in the squad is fully equipped. So we'll keep looking till we find him here. Well, the other squad's moving up to their uh, barracks as well, so. But I am fairly confident that these guys are all fully equipped now. Someone's left a splint on the floor. It's a good thing. It means they're not using it anymore. Yeah, I think we're ready now to launch our first raid. What I am going to do just to check is going to search for Rith. Rith Nightagrush, there he is. So let's view Rith's equipment here. Because if he has... Now Rith uh, being 10th means all he has for actual armor is this bronze cap. His iron mail shirt. But he... Oh no, he has bronze greaves too. And he has a water skin and backpack. So these guys now can fill up that water skin, fill up that backpack with food. And we can launch a raid with them. So we're going to do that now and see how it goes. So we're going to press C. And we'll just wiggle ourselves about a bit to get in it. There we are. And you can see all these other things around us. Our dwarven hillocks. Those are our friends. But this purple stuff down here. Well this is some goblins. And this looks like it's 50 or so there. There are just a lot of dark goblin pits all down here. Including what looks like a capital of some kind. There are also some goblins up a ways to our east. And we have we have had a couple of uh, 
couple of dealings with goblins. We're at war with these goblins, but apparently we are not even in contact with these ones. You'll see underneath the, the civilization, the factional whatevers, it just says no contact. But with the terrible poisons, we're at war. So we're gonna... Who are these guys over here? We're at peace with that civilization, the evils of troubling. Apparently those are tamed goblins. So what we're gonna do... We are going to R to raid this site, this 50 goblins. We are going to uh, press D for details. And we're going to go for a raid so that we try and avoid detection. And our goal is uh, yeah, take important treasures. Basically, we're going to try and do everything to just annoy these guys. So that's good. So we're going to raid them, and I think, seeing as there's actually 50 goblins here, we're going to send squads A and B. There are two commanders, they are ready to go. We press escape. Those guys are now going to go gather all their equipment, and then Rickard and Relic are going to lead their squads off the edge of the map, down to um, this goblin base. They'll try and not be seen while stealing things. I doubt that's going to happen with this being their first raid and them all, uh, you know, they're not very stealthy and there's a lot of them. But they have ranged attacks. They have some pretty strong melee fighters. This should turn out okay. And the reason we're going for these stealth raids to start with is our commanders aren't very experienced in terms of... Um, military leadership. They are fantastic fighters, but they've never led attacks on other places. All they've ever done is stand behind our walls and kill stuff when it shows up. Which is obviously not the best thing in terms of experience. Now you'll see there's an absolute ton of chicks around. We've ordered them all to be slaughtered for the most part. We've even built an extra butchery and assigned uh, the serfs the butchering skill. This is a lot less chickens than we used to have. I know that might not seem like it, but down here you could not see the floor for chickens. They just exploded in population because the serfs couldn't get to the eggs in time because they had so much to do. But we fixed that now. Um, we also got a few more lumber dwarves. But I don't know if they've actually um, started chopping trees down yet. And we're building out this stockpile here, which is going to be for uh, just wood. Just so we have a place to store the wood. Awesome. It was also going to give us a bit of stone. So to give you an idea on numbers in the fort right now, we're up to 101 dwarves. We still have we've only we've lost a medic somewhere. For the most part, we're unchanged. We have 20 serfs now, which is nice. A bit of an increase. We have our 30 legionnaires. We have a bunch of these random people exploring the caves. Uh, our metalsmiths at some point were killed or lost. <clears throat> so I've had to assign two random newbies to that. They did have a little bit of skill, but not in uh, not in all regards. The guests are still using that barracks. I found that um, there is actually a job that can be assigned in this um, area called Socialize in which the dwarves will literally go to the tavern and just hang out and have a good time. That seems to have helped a bit with um, moods, mood swings, but we're still uh, not an amazingly happy fort. But I don't know that there's too much more we can do about that at this point, aside from me going through 100 plus dwarves and manually assigning them to a job that they'd enjoy. But I don't value the dwarves' lives enough to do that, if we're being honest. We also have uh, built a clothes maker, and we bought an absolute ton of cloth, both from the homeland and from the humans, so that our dwarves would have nice new clothes to wear, which will have improved their mood. Somebody's got rotting food in their bedroom, that's kind of gross. We've expanded the uh, sleeping area, so we've got a few extra rooms over here now, and it looks like they're actually being claimed, not all of them, but just from the amount of dwarves we have. Still plenty of spare rooms, though. I wonder if that's one of the soldiers' rooms and, like, they'd left a snack in there for themselves and they're gonna come home and it's gonna be, like, gross. A lot of C the uh, C squad 
just have like permanent injuries now, so they're constantly flashing like that. Let's go take a look. How is this forgotten beast doing? Yeah, he just hangs out in this corner, sets the uh, sets the spider webs on fire. It does have a couple of permanent injuries and scars, mostly on its feet. I think one of its toes is like shattered and gone. But um, the longer this thing stays down here, it will eventually just accrue injuries from other residents. But seeing as it can breathe fire, if it doesn't want to throw down, I am quite happy to just let it do its thing. It says 98 citizens because we've got a bunch of people out right now. I think, uh, yeah, the miners are now, that they're done mining, are out to pick up all the wood. I'm not sure if the soldiers claimed all the axes and we stopped cutting down trees, so I ordered a bunch of uh, silver war axes made. Seems to be doing the trick. As for the, the raiding party we've sent out, we just have to wait now until they get back and we'll get a report on their activities. Now we're not raiding anything vital, we just picked a, a small goblin outpost. If we were to try and raid, say, the capital, with the experience on the leaders we have now, even though all of our soldiers are legendary or like experts and elites, mostly, because we've replaced one or two recently, they would just get their ass beat. It, like, it wouldn't even be, um, wouldn't even really be a battle. I've done it before, like, I've uh, destroyed a goblin civilization entirely, and even with Master Generals and all, like, Super Saiyan Dwarves, I lost a good 50% of my military. So the, uh, the capitals are no joke. I wonder why that's decreasing over there. Oh well. Maybe because of the amount of uh, redirecting we've done on this river. But as long as it doesn't run out, that's A-OK -okay with me. I don't think it actually can run out. I think there's an infinite source. Yeah, it's back up to... Back up to 7 now. So maybe that was just a momentary thing. I'm going to have to pause the recording for one minute. Alright, then we're back. Oh, people are leveling up and becoming real swords dwarves now. We did lose one or two people from uh, the the C team to a tantrum. One of their guys went nuts and just killed a bunch of them. And are you still? Yeah, this guy's this forgotten beast is just hanging out down here. He's a good three or four levels from where we are, and he's quite a ways across the map. I don't think anyone's actually found him at any point. He did fight a um, giant cave spider and just absolutely annihilated it. So, considering those things tend to take one or two of our dwarves with them, I'm a little bit hesitant to uh, try and take him on. What's this stuff? Is there something up here we haven't reclaimed yet? What is this? There's a copper helmet and gremlin leather some things that I can't see. And an iron helm. So those look like they're somewhat damaged because they're coming from uh, goblins, so they'll be salvaged and old. But that's not the end of the world. Still way too many chickens on the map. We might even build a third butchery just to hurry this along. Because they're breeding as quickly as we're killing them at this point. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to remove the extra butcheries when we don't need them anymore, but for now, we're going to do it. The other thing we're going to build in terms of workshops is the siege workshop, which is S. Now this is a massive workshop, takes up the entire 5x5 five five area, takes up some blocks to make. Uh, we don't actually have any siege engineers, we'll have to assign that probably to just one or two of the serfs. It's a very... Hmm. It's a very small, um... What am I trying to say? A seldom used profession, at least for me. There are some people who will use it quite often. I am not one of them. So, you know, yeah, it's actually just... We're going to look along here for, uh... Siege... Uh, we're just going to assign this to everyone, I think. 
because I don't think this affects the quality of their goods. And mostly we want it because, uh, yeah, the mayors keep asking for, sorry, the nobles keep asking for, like, um, siege-based goods, and they keep throwing people in jail when they don't do it. And that obviously sucks for us. Quite a few of those chicks have been slaughtered now. At one point, you actually could not walk down this corridor because the chicks were obscuring it and people were walking through the craft areas. Everything was being slowed down. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely keep one or two people free in the future to keep an eye on your chickens. Now, you missed, I think, most of a year in between um, this episode and the last. But not much has happened. The first uh, really eventful thing was that Minotaur showing up and we kicked his butt. And then the uh, the great chicken genocide of 73 began. We're making silver crafts. We accidentally sold one of our artifacts, but it was just a, a really crappy, um, I forgot what it was, but we, we got this new one which is Zealot Yell, the 58,000 Cigarro Rib Wood Cup. This is a Cigarro Rib Cup, all craft dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with single cut pink garnets and decorated with Cigarro Rib. Wow, I can't even say that. This object is adorned with hanging rings of diorite and red spinal and menaces with spikes of Cigarro Rib Wood and lead. On the item is an image of a dog and diorite. On an item is an image of a serpent monster and chert. On the item is an image of a radiant cut gems in Crundleborn. So it's just a bit weird. It's just a bit weird. Speaking of Crundles, I can't even... Wow, there's a lot of things on the map. I'm guessing there's a few Crundles down in the basement, but we'll have to wait and see. How's our raid doing? I don't think we can check until they get home. No, we can't. Uh, no, well, we can just see that they're on, on a raid. We can't see what their success rate is. We'll have to find out when they get back. Because they're basically going all Rambo Commando style right now. We also expanded the um, underground wild growth area. A lot of this stuff is dead now because it's autumn. But some of it grows all through the year, like the dimple cups and the plump plump helmets and the underground trees which within a year or two we should actually be able to harvest those are they still considered young yeah they're still considered young but in a year or two hopefully we'll be able to get those it does take a couple of years for any trees to grow but uh, the surface ones have started growing nice and thick so we should get that down here at some point keep an eye on this guy I just keep checking on him every so often but he's basically just settled on that little peninsula there and decided that's home. Really don't want to have to take him on with just the C team. Although, in fairness to them, they have actually uh, skilled up quite a bit since you last saw them. The tavern is always full of something. We've actually run out of Galena. Huh. But, as you can see, we have an ass ton of lead. A decent amount of silver. We've been trading for iron and other bars as we found it, but uh, we haven't got too many of those. I've honestly had more luck just trading for the products that we intended to make with them, like the um, the armor itself. We got quite a bit of. That's one of the C team, and as you can see, the guy is just flashing like crazy. Oh wow, he's actually a real hurt. I mean, he can stay in the military till he dies, it's fine. I'm not sure what he's doing up on the surface, exactly, but... Ooh, what's that green stuff? Whose body part is that? It's a bug bat skeleton, okay. Everyone on the list is currently busy. Someone is performing, a, a druid is dancing? Oh, everyone just having a little party over there in the uh, in the 
the tavern. That's cool. Looks like we're out of potato seeds for this surface thing. So let's take a look at our stocks on seeds. And see how we're doing. We're just going to keep going all the way down. We've got plenty of other seeds. A lot of it is underground though. I suppose we have that longland grass. But what we could always do is just... Um, Designate a bunch of plants to be harvested up here on the surface. We have, I think, like 11 druids now. Something close to that effect. Let's go all the way up to near the top. We have 8 druids. Quite a few of them. They have um, quite a few other skills because a lot of the druids held other professions for a while before we got them. The fishermen on you and kind of suck. But I didn't want to uh, do too, too much micro, considering that your dwarves will just skill up over time anyway. And we are not lacking in any way for food. We have an absolute ton of food and drink. Considerable amount of um, leather and cloth as well, which we're currently using. We built this little underpass to connect the, uh, the area over here with the rest of the fort, which I was hoping to do ramps on both sides, but I couldn't find a way to build a ramp on that bit. Something else we did, just to deal with uh, flying threats in the future, we built a bunch of hatch covers, put them over the top of this building, and one on the roof access here on the, uh, the tavern. Looks like people are just running out collecting all the wood at the moment. Now we uh, should probably order all of the stuff down here gathered as well. I did this not too long ago. But there's no harm in doing it again to see what else we can gather. And I think we're actually going to build an underground farm plot here. Not a massive one. See, not all of this is usable still. But we're going to do a, our first underground farm for a while. We're going to put some plump helmets in there. We actually have no idlers right now, which is nice. The last fight was still the Minotaur, which I still uh, am quite proud of how quickly he got his ass kicked. Should we go visit the uh, the Sea Squad? Let's go take a look and see what level of skill we're looking at on these guys now. Proficient, competent, and adept. Proficient, talented. Okay, so they're they're getting up there now. They're kind of at the midpoint. Pretty soon they'll be heading up into like the uh, spearmaster and sword lord. The uh, the you know they're pretty decent now. So I, I probably would fight the forgotten beast with these guys if I had to, but I, I'm still just gonna leave it alone unless it uh, tries to attack. No point in uh, losing the dwarves for no reason. And then what we're going to do is this floor here that's quite a ways down. We're going to turn this into under the mine because it has some galena and some regular stone. And we need that right now. So what are you doing? You're following this... Uh, I think this guy's storing some clothing right now. Oh no, he's taking clothes home. He's got, uh, got himself a new shirt. Somebody's got a lot of rings and crowns and stuff. Who is that? Two serfs, and they have just lying on the floor. Slate amulet, firelight crown, earrings. We might have to put a second level of cabinets in all of these rooms, because uh, a few people are starting to just chuck their stuff on the floor. But it might also be that they're just uh, messy as dwarves and have traits for that. New arrival. Oh, that might be our... Oh, our dudes are back. Mission report for the raid. Let's see here. Okay, so we stole treasure. And we got in and out undetected. 
which is basically what we were looking for. We stole one troll fur rope, one cougar leather quiver, one cave fish leather water skin, an iron a Who stole an anvil? Kudos to that guy. One tin cage, one dingo bone ring, a gremlin bone bossu, which is an instrument of some kind, cave spider silk bag, horse leather backpack, two iron gauntlets, nice, and a silver warhammer. Not like, not breaking the bank there, but that's a solid haul for a raid. And we're basically, over the course of the next uh, year or two in game, we're just going to repeat that, raiding that goblin civilization over and over to level up the dwarves who are going over there, their skills in sneaking in and out undetected and their planning skills. I wasn't expecting to actually get in and out with no fuss on that one. I was expecting to be found and have to kill one or two of the uh, goblins. But I'm glad that wasn't the case. Our uh, great hall here, all of the walls have been engraved. Looks like we need more barrels. So let's uh, let's find our carpenter. We haven't had to use this in a while. There he is. Let's uh, give new task order. Let's go for bins times 50 and barrels times 50. That should give the uh, new carpenter plenty to do with all of this incoming wood from the surface. Should also give somewhere all this. It looks like we're starting to just store food and seeds not in bags or bins. So uh, should give them something to do as well. Are any of you guys digging yet? No, you're all storing things. This generally happens when we get wood. Wait, what are you... Oh, thank God for that. I thought he was about to jump, like, try and use the stairs that we carved into the river for people to use to escape. I thought this guy was about to try and, uh, jump through. Don't you do it. Oh, can't, thank God for that. I thought he was about to try. You know what? Just to be safe, we're going to build a bridge over here. Because it feels like he was just looking for a way across. You know our tradition here, we build our bridges out of lead, which is good for our water supply. Except this one over here that's built out of stone, because we, I don't know, we didn't have too much lead at the time, I don't think. The uh, caravan from the mountain homes is still here, but, uh, yeah, they've, they've brought the anvil and dumped it in their house, along with an iron left gauntlet. I am super, super happy about that raid. Eventually, we're going to start raiding with the intent of um, raising settlements, destroying them. But we are going to, uh, again, now that the dwarves have had a couple of days back at home, we're going to press C. We're going to go down to these guys again. And we're going to raid with these two squads. So they're going to gather all the stuff and head back out. And we're just going to keep pestering them. This will increase the animosity between two civilizations. So if you're looking to start a war, this is a good way to do it. But seeing as we're already at war with these guys, all we're doing is kind of upholding our civilizations. Uh... I don't know, what are we upholding? Something. Uh, the ore processor is throwing a tantrum. Hopefully he doesn't get his uh, face beat in. In fact, he won't because the, the guards are away right now. They're the ones who normally give out uh, beatings as punishment. Would be nice to see someone cleaning up all of this blood that's on the walls, but I guess people are busy right now. Hell, even our miners are busy with this uh, wood instead of mining, but um, we don't actually need any more silver or lead bars right now. We just want to uh, keep people busy. Now, I do think the... Although I don't like it, the... Auto labor DF hack does seem to keep dwarves a little bit happier. So if you are the kind to care about your dwarves, that might be worth having.
interrupted by uh, oh what hold on it seems like the all processor has lost his mind he's not on the kill list which means he's not um, fully berserk, but he's throwing a tantrum. So, without the guards, that's basically just going to... Uh... What is going to happen with that, I wonder? Disorderly conduct. Yeah, someone's been convicted. We have a lot of disorderly conducts here. It's kind of, just kind of our thing. Frame rate has improved quite a bit now that there's uh, not as many chickens running around. But I think people are going to be busy with this uh, hauling and such for quite a while. Druids especially seem like they're busy. <clears throat> oh, is that grown? Are you grown now? Nope, still not grown. I guess it'll be next spring that they start really sprouting up. You can see this one over here is uh, relatively new, so there's not many plants in it yet. Just want to wait for this other raid to get back and see how they do the second time out. And then we'll uh, we'll check their skills on Rith, not Rith, on uh, Relic and Fickard. Because they should be um, getting skills like Ambusher and such for being out there. Oh, no, they've actually just returned. So let's take a look here at the raid report. Ooh. So this one did not go as smoothly. Looks like a lot of goblins being struck down. So yeah, uh, the dwarf Lickard bulwark nets happened upon a goblin. Uh, the goblin Osmod's left eyelid was slashed out. That's kind of gross. And then the goblin was struck down. The dwarf Stin had sculpted basements. Killed himself a goblin. Fickard ivory glazes, which I think is actually... Uh, Yeah, Fickard himself stumbled upon one of the enemy. And then... Oh. Yep, we looted treasure from them. Nice. So we didn't lose any of our dwarves. We looted the treasure. Let's see what we got. We got one troll fur hood. We've already raided them once. They wouldn't have had too much to take the second time. But it was just to raise our skills. So let's actually take a look here. We're going to go into military. And we're going to swap by... Um, Military status, we're going to read them again. We are going to look for... Our on-duty. And off-duty. Well, so we have a lot of, like, 20s in discipline and all this good stuff. But what we're looking for... Ambusher, let's, uh... Hmm. Honestly, folks, first time looking at this. This looks awful. <laughs> I'm not sure... What to really... Oh, well, that's some bad stats. Some of our guys have really bad stats. But they'll get better. They currently have no supplies, but they don't need any because they're just at home. And we have a lot... Well, at least we have a few 20s now on, the, on these weapon skills. So I think this time we might send them somewhere else. So we've raided that settlement twice. I think we're going to raid the one next to it. So we'll go for raid again. We'll assign the squads. We'll see what we get out of that place. Obviously with these guys being as strong as they are in close combat. If they do happen upon enemies while out in the field. They are more than capable of just cutting them down and maintaining their stealth. <clears throat> we'll probably leave them to rest a bit once they get back from this one. 
especially with uh, the A team having like three, two or three rookies in it. Definitely killed a lot of these chicks now. Let's see how many are left. A lot of kittens, still a bunch of chicks to get rid of, but uh, we've gotten rid of at least an entire page of those and a half since I started. Looks like they're arguing over who gets the good food because Fickard couldn't get uh, his provisions that he wanted. Somebody beat him to the good stuff. I'm guessing he wanted that nice uh, potato whiskey. I don't actually know what drinks we brew. We just grab random anything and we'll, we'll ferment anything here. There we are. <clears throat> now then, something I want to check. Let's go for, I think it's siege equipment out of silver. Ballista arrowheads, yes. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're actually going to go into work orders. And we're going to go for silver ballista arrowheads. We're going to order nine more after that first one just to stop me having to order it and then get back to it. So that we can make some uh, ballista bolts. Just to keep the nobles happy because uh, this guy keeps asking for them. So we're going to go into profiles here. And we're going to order silver ballista arrows. We'll order 10 of those assembled. And because that's a work order, even if they can't do it instantly, as soon as the arrow heads are ready, they can uh, start getting those, which is nice. Looking forward to seeing what we come back with from this other raid. Obviously, raiding like this is also a good way to get your hands on um, extra weapons and armor. You can occasionally get your hands on artifacts, but that is quite rare. Oh, taken by mood. Come on, get a good workshop. What are you taking, buddy? What's, what's your deal? Oh, he's taking the boyer's workshop. Well, I guess when Fickard gets back, he's getting a, uh, an artifact crossbow. So he's got some wood, looks like he's getting some stone. Okay, so just wood and stone, nothing crazy good. But still, artifact weapons and armor, they just make your uh, commanders have a little bit more personality. We also have quite a few bone uh, bolts being made still that are used in training for uh, the archery team. We made them a bunch of armor, but they seem to prefer just wearing leather clothing instead because it gives them the same amount of protection. So I'm just going to leave them to it, to be honest. They shouldn't really be in melee combat often, if ever, anyway. I do enjoy sometimes just, uh, oh, we're back from our raid, so let's take a look here. Nice, we stole from them without, uh, without being seen. We got a copper pick, a giant cave spider silk bag, a copper cap, two giant ohm leather shoes, one troll for a rope, one troll for a tunic, a tin bar, a silver mace, iron helm, a gold bar, and a tin cage. Obviously, with our uh, skills being what there are, we're never going to steal really, really amazing stuff. But for each thing we steal, we get a little bit better. And it's something we don't have to make as well, so pretty good. And I think, um, as soon as we're making these silver ballista arrows, we're probably going to make a ballista in the next episode. And what I'm thinking is, where should we put this? I mean, I don't believe ballistas can fire up and down levels. I think they only go straight, but they will cut a swath through entire ranks of enemies. So we might, I don't know, maybe put one like here as a, no. 
I'll, I'll have to um, look into it between episodes and see exactly what they're capable of before I make that decision. I have used them once or twice in the past. But, um... Not to great effect. Fickard is Captain of the Guard. We're going to wait for Fickard to get his uh, unique crossbow here. Because I want to see what that turns out as. And yeah, that guy is doing his job. Still a bunch of food and drink. We're actually getting ahead on that. Especially slaughtering all of these chicks. The fort's in a pretty good place right now. We don't see as many... Um, Tantrums or a sand pear wood crossbow claims it as a family heirloom. I've got bad news for you, son. So, um, yeah, we don't get as many tantrums or uh, especially berserker rages as we did a few years ago. It's only worth 3600 dwarf bucks. Shoot force of a thousand, maximum projectile velocity of 200. Okay, so we'll compare that to what he's using now. Sand Pearwood Crossbow. All Craft Dwarf ship is of the highest quality. It is encrusted with rectangle diorite cabochons. The object menaces with spikes of sand pearwood. So it's just a super simple artifact. But we are going to military. We're going to go to equipment. We're going to go to Fickard. Weapon. Specific weapon. Uh, there it is. Udebesh. I think it's Udebesh, isn't it? That was the right name for it. Yep. And it is Scream Roasted, the Root of Rock. I love some of these names, they're so ridiculously brilliant. That ore processor is still always stumbling around. He's really not having a good time. At some point, he'll annoy one of the legionaries and get his head broke, so it's fine. We'll replace him when that happens. We're still not even close to running out of cloth, which is really good. Alright guys, take a look at our stocks. How much more cloth do we have? Yeah, we still have plenty. And we're just using that just for making, um... Clothes. I think you can also use it for dressings for, um, injured dwarves. But I don't think we really have too many of those right now. Let's go have one more checkup on our forgotten guest. He's still down there. We might... Oh... Somebody went insane, and then went berserk. And he's in the caves, so squad C. Go kill that dude. And then I think we might follow him. Oh, and he was right by them too. Goodbye, that man. Oh, let's see. His foot just got chopped off. Yep, two pages, so they actually did okay, but then her uh, upper body was uh, cloven asunder by someone chopping them with a silver short sword. Someone will come down and bury that one now. We did extend the graveyard for no apparent reason, you understand. Absolutely uh, was not expecting to be murdering my own dwarves at any point. So a lot of these tombs are actually unoccupied now, which is nice. It's been a while since we've seen that. Lots of bugs flying around the place, but the cats will take care of them in time. Shall we try and hunt this forgotten beast to end off the episode? You know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's, um, let's end off this episode with a bang. I'm going to go all the way down, back to uh, Squad C's basement. We're going to get squads A, B, and C. We're going to station them. Now, I fully expect to lose a couple of dwarves here to uh, the fire in the first wave. The human bowman was found dead. What was he fighting? Oh, he was just fighting a jabberer. 
which was killed anyway by another human with his lasher whip. So once the other squads show up, we're going to um, order all three to just bum rush the um, Forgotten Beast. Okay, here they are. So squads A, B, and C, kill from list. Forgotten Beast, let's go. Any minute now, guys. Wait, can they not get to him? That would explain something if he's trapped over there where we can't get to. Huh. Seems like, um... No reachable valid targets. Yeah, so... I guess we're not gonna kill the Forgotten Beast to end off this episode with a bang. Although we do have, uh... Some digging going on. That's exciting, right, folks? I don't think that is Galena we were digging into, was it? No, it is Galena. Okay, good. Well, folks, as always, thanks a bunch for joining me, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.